It all started when a friend of ours, a mutual friend who is old and single and not necessarily the person that you would want to hook you up, um, introduced us by um, switching email, uh, exchanging email addresses. So did I? Did who? Did you email me first? Yes. So Liz emailed me, and then I emailed her back. This was before technology and the Facebook. So we emailed each other back and forth for about a month or two before we finally met. And then um, we never talked about relationship like when in the emails, but I think both of us now uh, were asking questions that uh, could uh, help us decide if it was something that we would like to pursue. So when we finally met, um, we I had said that we had, we had planned she was going to come to the church that I was at, and I had said before I even met her, I said, even if she's ugly, I'm still going to ask her out to lunch. Um, and so I did, not because she was or was not ugly, but because I had said I would. But I didn't go to lunch. No, she denied me. She turned me down. Um, but then um, I asked again, and we went bowling that night, and the next week we hung out, and then like then the next week we looked at engagement rings, and then two weeks later I proposed. Um, I said yes. She said yes. The yeah. um, What is true biblical love? Well, I think um, our society has explained away love to be more of lust. Uh, biblical love is is a, um, a a love that is unconditional. Um, as uh, Christ died for us, yet while we were still sinners, um, He loved us in even with our imperfections, and so our modern day society says that if things become a little bit different and you don't like the person anymore then you don't have to love the person anymore because it's a feeling or it's an emotion rather than um, an action and so I think uh, true biblical love would be an action not a feeling and it would be unconditional I think that like but well the same as Patrick said it's loving each other even when you don't want to, and even when situations can be tough. Sure. But even when you, you may not know what your future goals or whatever um, is to come in your relationship, you have the choice to say yes or no, and you just have to make the choice to say yes. You made the choice to say yes to be with that person, so therefore you have to make the choice to love them or her regardless of what your situation may be or not be. That is easier said than done, but you can do it by keeping your mouth shut on those days that you might be frustrated and not speaking your mind, but withholding those thoughts that you might have of frustration or discouragement. That's how I choose. I think it's it's really in the in the question. It's it's a choice. Um, you can choose to be happy, or you can choose to be sad, or you can choose to be mad at somebody, or you can choose to. Um, hate them or you can choose to love them and that goes back to my answer before that love is an action um, when times are tough you can choose to run away or you can choose to continue to love them um, uh, marriage is a commitment um, in good times and bad times for better for worse for sickness for health uh, so you've got to make the choice to stick it out because that's the, that's the commitment that you made to that other person well, you can see her, she's sitting right here. So you can tell what makes her beautiful on the outside. Um, but what makes her beautiful on the inside is her uh, love for Jesus and even her commitment to me. Um, again, back to the next question. Whoever formed these questions did a great job, one leading into the other, is um, Liz supports me uh, in the decisions that I make, and uh, they're not always easy um, for us as a family to follow, but I've never, though I've doubted lots of things, I've never doubted Liz's 
love and commitment to me and uh, that makes it very easy to love her back and that makes it beautiful inside and out what are some of the qualities that you love about your husband um, my husband has uh, many different men have different types of personalities and my husband is a dreamer and I think that is a great quality in him because I'm a realist so you mix the two together and you can make all of his dreams come true um, and he's very faithful in times of hardships we've had a lot of hardships and it's been very encouraging very um, wonderful to watch him walk through this and still have faith in God and still have the trust in God to know that it's him that gets us through it. But something else, Patrick works lots of hours and it's really nice to know that though the hours are long, the days are long, he has his family um, on top of his priorities and that's, that's very securing to know for my children and for myself as well that he wants to be there for us most importantly and I appreciate his leadership and our family and how much we can just learn from one another and talk to each other as well. He really is my best friend. Yeah. Uh, what does the Bible say about loving another person? Uh, the Bible says that we should love our enemies. The Bible says that we should love in all different types of circumstances and situations. Um, so love, again, is not uh, something that we do when we feel like it, but it's something that we have to work at constantly. Um, it is not our natural instinct to love our enemy, um, but we have to work hard to overcome the, the natural tendencies that we might have towards our enemy and instead um, love them. So, though, uh, though my wife is not my enemy by any means, um, if there is times when I don't feel like loving her, uh, the Bible says it loves her. Uh, I have made a commitment to her, she's my wife, we have uh, become one. Um, and so there's, the, the love toward her must be constant and continuous, no matter how I feel uh, or how I want to act. Must be first and foremost. I think too. Sometimes the word love is thrown around so flippantly. We love our cupcakes. We love school. We love our clothes. But we don't actually love them because that's a love that's based on feeling and conditions. Whereas biblical love is loving unconditionally, loving no matter what. So I think that's something that we try to teach our kids as well that we don't love everything that we see because that's based on a feeling rather than based on scripture or based on what God considers as a true love to me. You guys kiss? That would be really awesome. Do you want the light on? Ew! <laughs> <laughs> any, any time's good. That was great. Longer. And then could, could you guys also show the camera your wedding rings? You're like, what's that? What are you doing? Yeah, because we only, we need a person for a time. But I have, I have wedding pictures that I can get you, yeah. That'd be really cool. I have to email them to you. Yeah, that'd be awesome.
This is one of those moments where you have to love unconditionally. <laughs> <laughs>